Okay guys, so this is problem 313. So this is a polarization dielectric problem. Um, and in this case, we have a cube. So this is the uh, dielectric shape that we're given. Um, so the side length is L and it's centered at the origin. So we have it here at the origin uh, and we're given a polarization vector. So this problem, uh, fair warning, is way longer than something you're gonna see on an exam. But the exam, but the problem, you pro might see a similar problem, but maybe with like a polarization vector that only has an x coordinate, um, or one that that has the corner here, so that like three of the sides that are on these planes are equal to zero or something like that. I will do a shorter problem that's maybe about five minutes or so, and post a few of those. For this one, just feel free to skim it and kind of look at it at a high level, but realize that this is more in depth than you would have time to deal with on an exam. Um, so you, you may just have a partial version of this problem. So the exact same high level approach, just less solving. In this case, we have to solve for all six sides. I think for an exam problem, you might do something where you're just solving for essentially one side because some things will cancel. But I will do an example like that. So we're gonna do the long one first. So, okay, we're asked to determine the surface and volume bound charge densities. So we have the surface charge density here and the volume charge density here. So these are just general equations. So we're taking our polar, the, this equation means take the polarization vector and dot it with the vector normal to the surface to get the surface charge density for that surface. So in this case, uh, we like say for this top surface here, say we're looking at this one, um, we would um, essentially uh, look at, um, we would essentially have like this, this Z the z hat as our normal vector normal to the surface normal means at a right angle to or perpendicular to so we would have our z vector normal to that surface and we would dot it with the polar polarization vector to get our surface charge density so dot it with the polarization vector to get our surface charge density for that particular surface um, and so we're basically going to have to do that six times for this problem which is why it's so long uh, next for the volume charge density we take our polarization vector and we're going to dot it with this del operator um, that we've done and used for previous divergence operations. So we're just doing this in Cartesian. Uh, if you had a different shape, you, this del operator might be cylindrical or spherical uh, for a polarization dielectric problem. So these are the general equations. So after we find the surface charge density and the volume charge density, we're gonna find total charge. And that just is just integrating over the surface um, and multiplying it by the surface charge density or integrating over the volume and multiplying it by the volume charge charge density to get the total charge. So total charge is the that uh, uh, surface or the volume charge multiplied by the volume. Uh, total surface charge is the surface charge multiplied by the surface essentially or integrated over the surface. Um, so our total charge when we add QS and QV together should be equal to zero. So the total bound charge. So we're going to find these two. Uh, then solve for this part and prove that it's equal to zero. Okay, so starting with part A, um, so I just kind of drew a little side view here so you can kind of see the lengths here, why, where um, those measurements are, just maybe for like a little bit of a better view. Okay, so like I said before, to find the surface charge density, we have to take the polarization vector and dot it with a normal vector, and we have six surfaces um, for the cube and six normal vectors that are coming out perpendicular to those sides. Um, so if we take a look at our cube up here, uh, we can see that we have a normal vector on this front surface at y, a normal vector on this back surface of negative y hat, uh, a normal vector on this front surface as positive x hat, and then a normal vector on this back surface as negative x hat, and then for the bottom one, uh, negative z. So this is just, they're all at a right angle coming out of that, coming out of those surfaces. So we're finding the surface charge density for each of those six surfaces. Um, so I went ahead and pre-set this up because it's obviously very long. Um, so we have our polarization vector given to us by the problem. And then to find the surface charge density uh, for first off for the front surface, I'll highlight that guy first and we'll just look at one of them. So for that front surface where the normal vector is in the positive x hat direction, so right here, and we see our normal vector is coming out right here in the positive x hat, right? This is our normal vector, positive x hat. So we're gonna find that guy, that's what this first one is. So we have the polarization vector dotted with x hat, and this is gonna be our solution. The reason why uh, I said this a couple times before, but if you dot, so x hat dot x hat is equal to 1, um, but then if you dot a unit vector with anything else in its coordinate system, um, so x hat dot y hat equals 0 and x hat 
dot z hat equals zero. And there, so you can do it either direction, like z hat dot x hat or x hat dot z hat. Um, those are going to cancel, and so essentially the only term that we're going to end up with when we dot these um, these unit vectors here, my eraser is too big, we dot these guys, so we're just going to keep that x hat component, so we're keeping this, and we're keeping this. For the y, we're keeping the y, and for the z, we're keeping the z here. Um, so we're going to find out, we're going to see that our final result turns into these guys here. You can go feel free and solve out the math for yourself, but again, we're just looking at that this is kind of like a high level, so I want you to kind of follow the process, but... Okay, then after we do that, we're going to find the value for x um, or y or z at each of those planes. So let's look at our first one that we looked at before in the positive x hat, uh, and let's try to look at what that would be. So in the positive x hat, what is our x equal to? Okay, well, uh, we're looking at this front face right here, which is this guy right here. Um, and in the positive x, uh, we are moving, right, from the origin, we're moving this way, and that's how far we have to go to get to x, right? Um, so everywhere on the cube, uh, that's going to be, x is going to be equal to that value, because um, this is, you know, our x direction. So uh, because we're, our length is l, and we're starting from the center, so our length is l given by the problem, we're starting from the center, this is just l over 2, this distance here. Okay, so from, from each point from the center of the cube out, it's going to be equal to L over 2. Um, if it's going in the negative direction, it'll be equal to negative L over 2. So positive L over 2 here, and then for X, like going backwards, it'd be negative L over 2. So for Z, uh, positive L over 2, positive L over 2 going up, and then negative L over 2 going down. Uh, same for all of these guys. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. So we're plugging in that L over 2 or negative L over 2. And we actually find that all six surfaces are equal when we plug in those values for x, y, and z. Okay? So this problem just works out to be symmetrical. Okay. So now we found our surface charge densities for all six surfaces. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to find our volume charge density. So for our volume charge density, we're using this Cartesian del operator. If you don't remember this guy, refer, refer back to the Divergence and Stokes cheat sheets. Uh, it should be on there. So basically, all we need to do is take this del operator, dot it with our polarization vector, and the negative that of that is going to be equal to our, um, our, our charge density for the volume, so our polarized volume charge density. Okay, so we're plugging in our polarization vector right here, right? So we have our polarization vector right here. Just plug that in from the problem. And then we have our del operator right there. Okay, so again, uh, a couple of things. Uh, we, so x hat dot x hat equals one, right? Um, but when we dot this x hat with our y hat component, x hat dot y hat, it's going to be equal to zero. So these components are going to cancel out. So the only thing that this dx or d over dx is going to stick to is basically the x components. Um, so when we simplify our math, we can see that we end up with uh, this d over dx, um, the partial derivative of x with respect to x, the partial derivative of y with respect to y, and the partial derivative of z with respect to z. Uh, and then just multiply by p naught because this is a constant given to us by the original vector here. Uh, so we're going to end up with the volume charge density is equal to negative 3 multiplied by p naught. Okay? And I just put the unit vectors here for reference for any of you guys who have trouble remembering those. You can multiply this out and kind of see that it cancels for yourself if you want to use these just to kind of check that if that doesn't click for you right away. Okay. So moving on to... Part B. So for part A, right, we found the volume charge density and the surface charge density. And now for part B, what we need to do is we need to integrate over the surface and integrate over the volume for both of those and then add them together. So we're finding that QS and that QV and we're adding them together to prove that they're equal to zero. Okay. So for this guy, uh, because all of the sides are equal, uh, I was able to say that this DS, just use the DS for x for both of them, and for y and for z. Um, if this wasn't symmetrical, if this didn't work out the way that it did, essentially you would be solving six different integrals for six different volume charge densities um, for this particular problem. Uh, so I was able to simplify some things, but if you if there was some asymmetry, like say in this polarization vector, um, say you had like 3x or 2y, or something where these weren't equal and they weren't symmetrical, you would be solving six different integrals here to figure out all of the sides. 
and you would be solving six different uh, uh, dot products up here of this, uh, this polarization vector dotted with a normal vector, you'd be solving six different ones of those as well. Okay. All right. So uh, we simplified this a little bit. So we have two sides, uh, two sides in the for dx, x, uh, two sides for dsy, and two sides for dfz. Uh, we plugged in our surface charge densities that are the same for all of those. Um, so we plugged in this p naught over times l over two, and then pulled that out. So everything's multiplied by two. So we pulled out that two, and then we pulled out the p naught l over two. So this guy is pulled out to the outside and then just integrating over dsx, dsy, and dsz. So um, for the x, uh, the x normal side, it's going to be y times z. For the y normal side, it's going to be x times z. And for the z normal side, it'll turn into x times y. And so the bounds are going from L over 2 to negative L over 2 because the, the center is at the origin. So the length is going from negative L over 2 to L over 2 to equal a total of L. Um, so, yep, so solving the, those two integrals, uh, and then plugging in the upper and lower bounds for y, for z, for x, for z, and for x, and for y, and then essentially just, you're going to end up with l multiplied by l, so l squared plus l squared plus l squared, um, and then we get our qs here. If I went a little bit quickly through the math, feel free to go back and try a little bit of this yourself, um, but I just kind of want to hit the high-level concept here. Okay, so we found our qs. So next, we're going to try to find QV. And essentially, we want to prove that QS plus QV is equal to 0. OK, so we found our volume charge density from before. And we're plugging that in here. OK, and then we're pulling out this negative 3. And this, this P0 is also constant. Uh, and then we're basically integrating over dx, dy, and dz. So we're going to get x, y, and z. And then with the top and bottom bounds, plugging those in. Again, uh, we it's just going to turn into L times L times L here. And we're going to end up with 3 times P0 times L cubed. So this is our QV. So to find our total bound charge, we're adding QS plus QV. And so our QS is equal to 3 P0 L cubed. And then our QV is equal to negative 3 P0 L cubed. And so the answer is 0. So we did prove that the total bound charge is equal to 0. Uh, so the approaches for these problems are going to be very similar. Uh, same general equations uh, that we saw at the top, so just going up here. So just to reiterate, same general equation where find the surface charge density, find the volume charge density. This del operator will change. Say you have a sphere. Um, this del operator exists in the Cartesian, spherical, and cylindrical coordinate systems. Check your cheat sheet. Uh, this dot operation will be really, will, you, can, you can use this like, uh, del dot a operation that you see and plug in like the x y and z components of a, a polarization vector in for a uh, to be able to solve for this so just using that cheat sheet if you need to okay so just pay attention to your shape then um, so you found these two and then you want to um, uh, integrate over the surface or integrate over the volume so just look for your bounds uh, and then um, this will be equal to QS and QV, so if the problem asks for those separately, and then adding them together is going to give you zero. So I'm going to solve for a less complicated version of this problem, where we just have less sides to solve for, because I think there's a little, there's a lot of moving pieces for this particular problem. So, and it's a little longer than you would see it on an exam. Okay, so just a summary solution here. I just included that and I'll put this in the link in the description and go ahead and do a shorter version of this guy. That's just kind of mathematically solving for a polarization vector with less um, directions here.